All right, stoichiometry, the most fun you can have with a calculator in chemistry. It is probably the the most interesting topic that you'll do in chemistry and because it's used in all parts of chemistry and it's to do with finding out how much stuff you're going to produce in a chemical reaction. So let's get started and let's have a look at it then. What does a chemical reaction show you, first of all? You need to understand this. What it shows you is how many molecules are used in a chemical reaction, so your reactants, and also how many are created. And it's the ratio between these products and reactants which a um, chemical equation shows. And it works on the law of conservation of mass. Basically the idea that what you start off with must be equal to what you end up with. So the mass of the start must be the mass of the end. This also means that the number of atoms that you start off with must be equal to the number of atoms that you end up with as well. And that's how you get balanced chemical equations. And you all know how to balance chemical equations, so I don't need to talk about that. But what I will show you is this example here. We've got sodium chloride, normal table salt, being created from sodium metal and chlorine gas. Um, I might put in a YouTube clip on how, what this reaction looks like, because it's actually a pretty funky reaction. But we'll just look at it for now. Balanced, it means that we have two sodiums here and one chlorine molecule, giving two sodium chloride chloride molecules. Our two sodiums, just simple grey metals, our chlorine is a yellowy greeny gas. Okay, When these two react you get two sodium chlorides bundled together. That means we have two moles of our sodium, we'll react with one mole of chlorine to give two moles of sodium chloride. And it's this ratio of two to one to two that we use in stoichiometry. So that means if we have two we get two moles of sodium chloride. If we have one sodium, that means we get one mole of sodium chloride. If we have four moles of sodium, it means it will react with two moles of chlorine because we only keep the same ratio. So let's go into um, how we use this information and work out um, our questions. It goes on a few different, few very simple steps which you all need to use. And you need to show all your working out when you're doing stoichiometry um, um, questions. So let's have a look at those steps. What it firstly says, the first thing you need to do is every time you get a question you need to write an equation for it. You need to read the question, work out what your products are, what your reactants are and put it together as an equation. You'll be given a mass or a volume and concentration of one of those at least and what you need to do is convert whatever you can into moles. Okay, This is the second step, you need to show that you converted stuff that you're given into moles. Then you need to do the ratio of what I just showed you um, of the coefficients in our equation to find the unknown number of moles that you're going to have. I'm going to show you examples of this soon. Okay, And then once you have your unknown number of moles you work out what the question wants you to. Okay, Even if this doesn't make any sense at the moment, okay, once you see some examples and come back to this it will make more sense. So you probably should watch this twice I would say. So let's move on and see another um, ex explanation of how this works. This is another diagram showing you exactly what we need to do. What I should have done here is really written up an equation at the top here, but I haven't done that, so you can just get over that. But imagine we have our reactants on this side and our products on this side. What we need to do is we have grams concentration and volume of something. We convert that to moles. We then do a ratio to work out an unknown number of moles and then we convert it back to whatever a question asks us to do. And I'll give you examples of these very, very shortly. But the idea is we should have an equation up written up here. We then convert to mole, we do a ratio and then convert back to whatever the question asks us to do. And these are our four steps all the time. Ratio, mole, sorry, equation here, mole, ratio, convert back. Now I'm going to focus on the ratio here because this is something you haven't done before. I'm going to give you an example. So here's my first little example. What do you mean ratio? Basically it's a ratio of number of moles of different things in an equation. For example, we have an unknown, then we have a known here. All right? An example is this one here. I'll just go through what it says. We have hydrochloric acid, magnesium, gives you magnesium chloride and hydrogen gas. Okay, Say we're given an amount, 
sorry, say we're given an amount of hydrogen that we want to find out that we have produced. Say that we say, let me start again. This reaction here, it produces 10 grams of hydrogen. How much hydrochloric acid must we use to create 10 grams of hydrogen? What I do is I put a ratio of what I know. I find my number of moles of hydrogen. I put that over the coefficient that it has. At the front of the hydrogen here would be an invisible one. All right. So it's number of moles of hydrogen over one because in here, thinking about algebra, it's one. Hydrochloric acid here okay, has a two as its coefficient. We want to find out this. This is our unknown. So what we do is we go number of moles of hydrochloric acid divided by two, which is its coefficient. So the coefficients go underneath it. What we can then do is work out what we want to find out. And um, this will be explained in two examples that I'm going to give you um, next. And what I want you to do is, after you've watched those examples, after you try to question yourself, go back to this and watch it again. So you really want to watch this podcast twice at least before you go ahead. So then you can understand where all this is coming from. No, this is different to what it says in the textbook. It's a different style of ratio. I prefer this, okay, because this is what I was brought up with and this is how I understand it. I think this is a very clear way of showing ratios. Anyway, um, you can look at the textbook if you want, but don't get confused. So what I do is I put the number of moles divided by the coefficient equals the number of moles divided by the coefficient. It's easier for me. Hmm? Oh, are you doing something? Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's all right. What are you doing? Uh, just doing a podcast. <laughs> now you're like, man, man. All right. Well, oh, good. Cheers. Apologies about that. Kind of got interrupted there. Anyway, um, so this is different to the textbook, so please be wary of that. Next thing, I've got two questions on a video, so please see the sample questions one and two. I might put them in this podcast. I might not, um, but I'll, they'll be on Dropbox. And then I've got... Example questions three and four. Might be on this podcast, might not be. And then we have a summary. This is a summary of how to do stoichiometry. You always need to write a balanced equation for a chemical reaction. You always must calculate the number of moles. Then you must do the ratio. And then you find out what the question is asking you. So after your ratio, you go back and convert it into what it is. You need to show all this working out for every single question. If you don't, it's very, very hard to work out what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong to help you. So you must do all this working out. And then I've got a list of questions here that you can do. You can do questions 1 to 8, 12, 13, then 14 up to 32, sorry, 33, and then 40 to 43, and then 45. All these questions are expected, okay? You need to do a whole bunch of practice problems with this because it's just the way it works. All right, so I expect you to do these questions. All right, if you have any questions, um, please don't hesitate to ask me. Put your hand up in class and I'll come over and help you out. But that's it for this time. Watch the sample videos, try a question, and then watch this thing back again. And apologies about the interruption. Some people just can't help themselves by talking to me and laughing at me for talking into a computer with no one around. Anyway, enjoy yourself, have fun with the calculator, and get on to stoichiometry.